Yes, madam. How we can control our anger? Sometimes I got. I can control your anger. Yes, that is important question because that anger is directly caused. <laughs> 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 so pretty much I've got I've got your happiness in my hands there's a lot hinging on the next five or ten minutes at this point in time. yeah it's very good question very good question so, so anger management like that, that's a big big subject these days like I have two that. beautiful kids you have two, have two beautiful, beautiful kids, kids but yeah. I can I cannot control my anger sometimes after that I feel guilty but I cannot control my anger sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so anger management, you can make a lot of money these days by uh, dealing with people's anger management. It's becoming a bigger problem in the world these days. And everyone has anger. Anger is a part of life. Anger is a natural emotion. And anger is good when it's used at the right times. It's not a bad thing. There's nothing bad about anger, but it must be used at the right times. And in our ancient teachings, it says that if you want to be peaceful, hands up if you want to be peaceful. Yeah. So as you as you drove in, peacefulness was one of the signs, right? So if you want peace, <clears throat> uh, in the ancient teachings, it says first you must control six things. Right? You must control your tongue. It means you can't just eat anything and everything. People who do that, they can't control themselves. They they become disturbed. You have to control your belly. Because some people just like to eat more and more and more and more like that. And if you do that, you'll also not be peaceful. And you have to control your genitals. And you see people who can't control their genitals, they're not peaceful. So your tongue, belly and genitals must be controlled if you want peace. And then it says, <coughs> your mind. You must control your mind if you want peace. A lot of people just have not control of their mind these days. You know, whatever their mind says, they just do it. But if you live like that, then you'll never be peaceful. Uh, your uh, speech, what you say, uh, that must be controlled, otherwise you'll not be peaceful. You know, wars start over words, and wars stop over words. Right? And happiness in life comes from what you say, generally, and your unhappiness very much comes from what you say. So you have to learn to control your speech. Uh, just like uh, 1960, I think it was, or 61, it was like that. You know, Russia and America almost went to war. I mean, we're talking about thermonuclear, full-blown, the Third World War practically, in the beginning of the 60s. And it was only because uh, Kennedy at the time uh, controlled his tongue a little bit and what he wrote back, because, that, you know, it was dialogue going back and forth. And because he controlled himself a little bit, that's diverted the... Because he had to use the wrong words at the wrong time, the whole thing could just, you know, explode. So we have to learn to control our speech if you want to be peaceful. And then it says the sixth thing, your tongue, your belly, your genitals, your speech, your mind. And the final thing, if you want to be peaceful, you have to control anger. So then how to control anger? This is an interesting thing. So where does anger come from? That's the first thing. You have to understand where, it, where, where the root. <clears throat> the problem is in these days, um, in medicine, uh, if, if someone's sick in the West, what do we do? Right? We go to aisle three at Coles, right? you get the same pill, right? and you just start you know, throwing in aspirin or disprin or whatever it is, and then that, that will make you feel better temporarily. But you're not solving the root of the issue. So in India, we call that science of uh, medicine, we call that Ayurveda, which means you have to go back to the root. Uh, so what is, what is the cause of this sickness? Not what don't treat the symptom, but treat the cause. So anger has a cause. So don't treat it superficially, the symptom. Right? Like some will say, don't be angry. Right? That's the symptom. Okay? So you're dealing on that level. You have to go back to the cause. So what is the cause of it? So the cause of it, Krishna actually says in the, the Bhagavad Gita, he said it is calm. Calm means desire. When your desires are frustrated, that's when you become angry. Right? So Pete, you see, because we all know people, it might be us or it might be someone else. 
uh, if people have a lot of anger issues, it's because they have desires which are frustrated or not fulfilled. So find out what are those desires. Uh, so we have to see uh, what are those desires. Uh, now, you gave an example with your kids. You get angry with your kids. Sometimes you have to get angry with the kids. Sometimes it's good for them. Anger is a good thing, but it has to be controlled. Uh, just like with my daughter, sometimes I say, hey, God, that's enough. Right? And my mother and my father, they were very good parents. Uh, they were, it was, uh, now that I look back, they were very balanced. You know, they didn't let me go too far, but they weren't too over the top either. So you have to like strike that balance. So sometimes with the kids, you have to, hey, what's, hey, stop. That's good. It's anger. And you have to say it because it's good for them. But if it's too much and it's just coming from anything, anything, you know, any little thing they do, you get, then that, obviously that's not healthy. So you have to look at yourself. So with my daughter, sometimes when I'm dealing with her, I just say, you know, I, I treat her very much like an adult in terms of our conversation level. Did you see that show? Uh, it was on a few years ago. It was called Super Nanny. Did you hear that or did you see that? So I go to the library, get that, rent that out of the library and just study that for it. If you want to learn how to deal with your kids, because this, this lady, she's a genius, how to deal with it. And you can deal, you can get over anger a lot just by speaking to them on a very rational level. You know, so that's what I try to do, I just say, listen, we're just going to have a talk right now, right? And then we, we talk and we rationalize through it and she'll still be upset and everything and I'll be, you know, still disturbed because, you know, she's carrying on like that. But then we can just rationalize it and we can learn. So people have to learn better communication skills and these things. And as for your husband, then, uh, <laughs> okay. The same thing, it's because of frustrated desire. You want him to be doing something that you want. Uh, so usually in life, the reason we have so many problems is because we're, we're too egocentric or too self-centered. Like, I want you to behave like this, but we already discussed in the beginning of our discussion. Don't try to change the other person, try to work on yourself. Right? Instead of, oh, you have to change, I want you to be like this. Right? You, maybe you just... Uh, deal with some of your desires and become a little bit more self-satisfied, a little bit more Krishna conscious, a little bit more connected to God, and then you won't be so demanding on those around you. If you're more peaceful within yourself, you won't need to extract so much from the other person. But all of us have, you know, we, we all have needs and wants, that's why we get married. But it should not be unreasonable. Don't be unreasonable on the other person. Does that help? Okay. Does that help? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep telling her the same thing. Keep telling her what? The same thing. The same thing. Mm -hmm. Don't give me such a hard time. <laughs> no, but she wants to hear from you. Okay, okay. But yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we should not be too. The, the problem is we're too much into ourselves these days. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, I want this, I want that. But then my guru, he doesn't live in this world anymore. He left this world like this. But uh, he said to me one time, and I always remember this. He said, why do you want to do this? And I started saying, oh, you know, because of this. Uh, and he just looked at me and said, who cares what you want? Right? And I always remember that. Right? And sometimes when I'm thinking, oh, you know, I want this and I want this and I want that, then I think, does it really matter? Is it really such a big deal? Most of the time it's not. And then it just brings things back into perspective. So, Okay. <laughs>